Good morning. Welcome to Global Television Network's Capital Forum. This morning, we are extremely privileged and honored to have an individual who really does not need any introduction whatsoever. He's a man with multi-dimensional achievement, extroverted personality. He's a generous, kind, a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, a thought leader, an author of two important books, an eloquent speaker, and a decent human being who always tries to help people with your generosity. His name is Dr. Frank Islam. He has been honored with so many awards, accolades, from across the globe. It is my privilege and honor to interview him. How he has accomplished so much in this short period of time. Dr. Islam, recently you were in Missouri, well, thank invited you. Thank you by very much. the well-known journalistic association to be there for a week. Could you tell our viewers exactly what was the purpose of your visit to Missouri? So we went to Missouri School of Journalism, my wife Debbie and I, uh, and stayed there for five days. And as you all know, the Missouri School of Journalism is the best mm. school in the world. Um, and the purpose of our trip to get to know them a little bit more, and I mentioned to you when we were when I gave that speech to the National Press Club, where mm -hmm. you were there, Dr. Bonick, that the we funded a, a scholarship, uh, a, our fellowship program for Indian Amer Indian journalists to come to America and get a training for six months at the School of Journalism. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and the program is known as AFPP, Alfred Friendly Press Partners. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they, they not only bring the people from India and, and South Asia, which is Pakistan, the other country, but also all over the world. As you know, the, the ceremony that you and I attended were people from all mm -hmm. over the globe. Um, and the reason that we funded this thing uh, the scholarship program because we believe in freedom of press. Freedom of press is the cornerstone mm -hmm. of our American democracy. It is enriched in our constitution, and it is, it is, uh, it is the America's check and balance of the systems of America, and we should celebrate it. And freedom of press, not to bury it. So that was the purpose mm -hmm. of my trip. Is and after the, uh, after my engagement. Uh, from Missouri School of Journalism, I went to some other part of the of the Missouri. Also visited that, but uh, one of the things that uh, that uh, was uh, something that really I felt strongly good about it that the mm -hmm. I had a privilege uh, to participate in a discussion with a lot of students at several occasions, at several classes. And I tell in Missouri. you, in Missouri, mm -hmm. a school of journalism. Mm -hmm. So there were four classes that I attended, and they turned around, asked me the questions: Why do you support this thing? And also, mm -hmm. they asked about the my journey in entrepreneurship. They also asked me what made me successful. And but I have to say, Dr. Bonnick, they were young, they were vibrant, they were engaged, they were involved, uh, they knew their questions. And they are the hope of tomorrow, these young generalists. So I, I was really pleased to be there. And uh, I will continue to uh, fund this program for the next year as well, which is the 2018. And there are some candidates that, that they have it. And, uh, and hopefully they will select one. And then we will be able to get the people from India to come to America to learn about journalism. One of the girls that we, the girl that mm -hmm. we elected uh, I would say selected the right word, uh, Smitha Rajan. Mm -hmm. She's a fearless fighter, and she works for DNA. And one of the things she learned uh, with my conversation mm -hmm. to her at the National Press Club is about, you know, fact-checking. Mm -hmm. Fact-checking. And, and, and she, le she learned that at Politico when she was there. Uh, and she will take it back to India 
and do the same thing for the newspaper for the DNA. So uh, hopefully in a, in a, we have contributed and made a difference in a meaningful way uh, for two democracy, which is India and, and the United States, India being the largest democracy and the United States being the oldest democracy. These are the values that binds us together. Hopefully she will, she will learn a lot and she will go back and do some of those things uh, and that will mm -hmm. make the, uh, in India, a, India is a great democracy. It will also make India to flourish the democracy and that's an important part of uh, that uh, engagement was. Dr. Islam, I want to compliment you. I have read that eloquent speech of yours at the National Press Club, which was widely covered in Huffington Post, Times of India, and other journalists complimented you for coming out and challenge the fake news until how this Freedom of press is so vital for the survival of our nation and the democracy. So I want to compliment you. Well, on thank you very much. Uh, to me, uh, we, sh uh, the, the, we should the 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 job of the uh, uh, the journalist is to separate the facts from the fiction. And uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, mm. people who talk about the fake media and so on and so forth. Uh, this is uh, an attack on the media. They're doing their job. And, and they're exposing the story that they need to be exposed. So I, I, I was glad that we were there, and I'm glad you, you came and participated there, so thank you for your kind words. Well, I had the honor and privilege of spending one week with you. During the time I attended the National Press Club's Alfred Friendly's Press Partnership Program, next you had been a keynote speaker at the bicentennial celebration of one of the iconic founders of Aligarh Muslim University, Sar Sayed, followed by your keynote speech at the DC Film Festival, South Asian Film Festival. Then your meeting with the President Donald Trump and his wife Melania Trump in the White House, followed by your keynote speech at NCAIA Independence Day program. I, within 10 days time, I have been with you on five different occasions and I have seen how you have such a depth of knowledge in various fields. I want to suggest to you that you should write a book about your experiences, what you have gathered so far, that will benefit our generation yet to come? Well, uh, I have written two books, and both books uh, are not focused on me personally. Both, both books uh, focus on America, and uh, it's called Pivot Points, with the second book, the first one, Renewing the American Dream, and how do we make America competitive in the, in the global market. Uh, I think your ideas are well taken, and that's something we, I think we should do that. If I, anything that I can do to make a difference, mm -hmm and also to make sure the younger generation can look at people like you and me as a model so that, uh, so that they can do their best and they could, be, they could also help other people to succeed. That will be the, something that uh, I think we will leave behind as a legacy. So it's a wonderful, it will be great to, to have that and I will consider that. And so maybe you will have somebody who can help me to write that. And maybe I can <laughs> do that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. To talk a little bit about uh, three things that you just yeah. mentioned to me uh, about the, my speech at the Sasi Ahmed Khan, who was the founder, and then the DC South Asian Film Festival, and then the U.S. India uh, uh, NCAIA, mm -hmm. where you're the chairman. So Sasi Ahmed Khan was the founder of the Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College, and the 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 purpose of founding this college which later became a university in 1920, known as Aligarh Muslim University, was to enable and empower not only just Indian Muslims, but Indian Muslims and Hindus and mm. everyone by education, because he believed that education empowers the mind right. mm -hmm. and uplifts the soul. He also believed that the education is the gift that keeps on giving, mm -hmm. and education is a powerful equalizer to get people out of the poverty. And also, as you all know, Aligarh Muslim University, it, it, to me, what is best, what's best in me is 
because of Aligarh Muslim University, uh, I have been enabled, enriched, and empowered by Aligarh Muslim mm -hmm. University. And Aligarh Muslim University shaped my history and determined my destiny. Its principles have always guided me throughout my life, whether the time is calm or the crisis. Aligarh shaped India, India shaped Aligarh. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and one of the things that I wanted to share with you, uh, uh, it was the 200 celebrations about communal peace mm -hmm. and harmony. The first graduate of Aligarh Muslim University was not a Muslim, was a Hindu. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. said, Hindu or Muslims alike has to work towards their shared goals and with a shared responsibility and shared sacrifices. And that's what he said. And I believe in it. We are in this together. If we are together, we can build a better future, not only for America, but for India as well. We, we, uh, I, I'm a... Uh, I'm a very uh, strong believer in the inclusive uh, India and inclusive America. Now, the, the, the next one, uh, uh, as you know, Zina Taman, and uh, who was the chief guest, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, for the South Asia Film Festival. I have to compliment Manoj and Gita. They have done a great job to bring uh, not the Bollywood movie that we all know, independent movies, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and give them the opportunity and the platform. As you all know, that my foundation focuses on two things. You, three things, as a matter of fact. The first one, edu education, as we talked about at Muslim University, where I, we have given $2 million to build Frank and Debbie Islamic School of Management, because that's important to us, and I, will, I can talk to you if you're interested. The second thing yeah, that- please. We, yeah, please. I will do that in yeah. a minute. The second thing, Dr. Banik, is uh, art. Mm -hmm. uh, art, uh, as President Kennedy said, nourishes the roots of our culture. Art, art engages us, art uh, transcends our boundary, mm -hmm. and it, it has a healing power, as I believe, mm -hmm. and art it represents the best of our humanity. And uh, as Robert Frost once said, uh, when President Kennedy introduced him, that the, that the power corrupts and poetry cleanses. <laughs> very well, no, cleanses, excuse me, and very well mm -hmm. said. So I'm a strong believer of art, and we have given a close to a million dollars to Kennedy Centers on mm -hmm. this thing. And education, we talked about. The third area that we focus well, on. Well, the board of trustees there. The I am, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be appointed by President mm -hmm. Obama uh, to be the board, mm -hmm. board of the trustee, the Kennedy Centers. Uh, third things that uh, my, my foundation focuses on, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we are very much active at U.S. Institute of Peace. Mm -hmm. We have given also significant donations, about a million dollars, to U.S. Institute of Peace because of conflict resolution and also promoting the mm -hmm. peace globally. So. And then I, I was a, uh, your mm -hmm. guest, uh, 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 and thank you for inviting me to speak at the NCAIA event, which is a talk about U.S.-India relationship. Uh, it's important uh, for, for, for us as a nation, in, uh, as an American, that, uh, that the, we work uh, with India because those are the values that binds us together, uh, the, the democracy, the diversity, mm -hmm. Uh, what we both nations believe in, freedom of press, freedom of faith, freedom of religion. Those are the things that we believe in it. And uh, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bullish on, uh, on the U.S.-India uh, US relationship, and I think it's going to flourish in all the areas, the terrorism, the extremism. We have to remove the extremism. That's the wrong thing to do, what the people do in terms of the extremism. And also the Afghanistan is a, and also uh, the defense, as well as the clean energy, the clean powers, and so many things. There, are so many areas that we can work together with the United States. And uh, I hope it will. I hope that the uh, our two nations can take the relationship to the next height. I have been highly impressed with your achievement. You started with one employee yourself, with Frank Islam Investment Corporation. It became over 2,000 employees with $400 million revenue. How did you accomplish that? Okay, so first of all, the company that I founded was a QSS Group Incorporated, and after I sold it, and, and then uh, uh, I invest, uh, then I uh, started FI Investment Group, mm -hmm. it's also known as FIIG. Uh, let me say this, uh, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. willing to take a risk Mm -hmm. and ventured into the new horizon and experiment new environment. I always wanted to be a business owner, but in order to become an entrepreneur, a business owner, I needed education, which I got, which mm -hmm. I got from the University of Colorado in Boulder. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree and master's degree, and that gave me the real uh, 
not the real experience, but I needed mm -hmm. the real experience in order for me to start the business uh, being an entrepreneur. So I worked for two information technology company to gain the experience, what I call a world grounding experience, so that I can start my business. So in 1994, uh, I, we, my wife and I, mortgaged uh, our house and borrowed $45,000 of a Riggs National Bank, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, to, to buy this company called QSS Group Incorporated with one employee, which was me. 1994. 1994. And with me and my, along with my manage team, management team, we were able to grow that company from one employee to 3,000 employees mm -hmm. to revenue, as you said, several hundred million dollars. So team of talented managers are central to everything. I would also say success in business is a team sport. Mm -hmm. So it's not I, we who made it happen. Your question with regard to what made me successful, well, it made me successful several things. Number one is getting education, mm -hmm. uh, which I will say to people in the audience that you've got to mm -hmm. get a good education. Second thing being willing to take a risk. Third thing is becoming an entrepreneur. And the fourth thing I will say, get, uh, surround yourself with the, with the talented managers who share your vision and value. Mm -hmm. Give them the oxygen to breathe, and they will mm -hmm. do the wonders. And then 1990, 2007, I believe, uh, Mr. Ra I sold it to Ross Perot, uh, which is a Perot Systems Corporation. They gave me the financial independence to, st to, uh, to start this foundation, mm -hmm. Frank mm -hmm. Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation. We mentioned that mm -hmm. the foundation focuses on that thing. I will say that the giving money and making other, other people successful is much more rewarding than any money I have made in my lifetime. And I'm reminded and guided by the words of President Kennedy, who said, to whom much is given, much is expected. To me, it's a phil I'm a philanthropist. I want other people to succeed. I want, I want, I want enable the other people, s not giving their hands up, not a handout. That's Can what I believe. Can you share with our viewers? I know you have got over 100 institutions that you have supported, you know? Give us a little brief overview of educational institution, business institution, art and humanities, as well as philanthropic institution. So, uh, first of all, uh, uh, we support uh, the, the educations, mm -hmm. the arts and cultures, and other institutions, as you mentioned, and uh, because that's what our foundation focuses on. So, so education the area that the, we focus on in the United States. Uh, we have given, um, I, I would say that we have given is the right word, we have contributed. Mm -hmm. We made investment I mean, that correct. we believe will yield exponential returns to universities in the United States, Marymount University and the American University, University of Maryland, George Mason University, and George many, Hopkins also. George, George Hopkins, mm -hmm. uh, size, and also Kerry School of mm -hmm. Business, mm -hmm. where I'm on the, uh, on the board as well. Besides, you also have involvement with um, Malaysian. Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, besides, also, yeah. I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees mm -hmm. at American University in Afghanistan, which mm -hmm. we have contributed as well, and also the University in Malaysia, and also an American University in Dubai, right. where I'm a, board, mm -hmm. a member of the Board of Trustees, at, which is called in UAE as well. So education, uh, as I said to you, uh, is, a, is, is a gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. It creates the next generations, and it propels the individuals, moves the nation forward. Um, and, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, you wanted me to talk a little bit about the contribution that mm -hmm. we made to Aligarh Muslim University. So Aligarh Muslim University contribution that we made was a 2.15 uh, uh, or $2.2 .2 million to build Frank and Debbie mm -hmm. Islamic School of Management complex. So when I went to inaugurate the building, it's a beautiful building. Oh, I say wonderful. the construction is mm -hmm. done. Now mm -hmm. the constructing can begin. Mm -hmm. I also said that the it's not the building of a building, it's the building of a foundation that will stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. I also said to the students, if you conceive it, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And I mm -hmm. want them to know that they can realize the dream as well, just like I have. I also said a very, uh, which I think is important to me, that that institution will be educational empowerment zone. Mm -hmm. And I also said in my, in my speech when I uh, when I went there to, 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 uh, to, to f for the, for the for not for the foundation the of the building, for the inaugurations of the building, that the, from this complex will come out the future leaders 
mm -hmm. will go out not only to India but around the world to make a difference, to make a meaningful difference and a positive difference in people's life. And I also said the Aligarh Muslim University had a storied past and these leaders will write the story of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, as for the art is concerned, I mentioned the Kennedy Centers and the several other institutions. Strathmore. And my, Strathmore, mm -hmm. and my wife also, folk, my wife is into the, uh, um, also the board member of the National Symphony mm -hmm. Orchestra, board member of the uh, Washington Performing Arts, uh, board member of the Shakespeare Theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are very much involved with the art, and uh, I've already mentioned that the art is an important part of what we believe in it. The third, third area that we focus on, the peace and conflict resolution, that's mm -hmm. the reason that we have uh, supported and contributed a significant amount of money to the U.S. Institute of Peace. So those are areas that we, that we, uh, uh, we continue to uh, focus on and uh, helping other people to succeed. And as I said, and I will continue to say, when they succeed, all of us succeed, mm -hmm. America succeed, India succeed, and the world succeed. Even the local college like Montgomery College. Yes, I do have, have, I have we have a support at Montgomery College, a symposium mm -hmm. named after us, and, and, and they, they mm -hmm. bring in scholars and the people who can, who can talk about the recent topics and so on and so forth. They do, mm -hmm. yes, thank you. Now, tell us, what are the future programs you have got planned? Well, I don't have the crystal ball, uh, <laughs> but I will continue to do what I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, to continue to be engaged and involved with the community and also to help, and su and to, uh, help uh, people and so that they become successful. I, I'm also politically very much engaged in mm -hmm. it, and uh, as you know, that I was very much part of the Hillary Clinton's mm -hmm. campaign, and right. fortunately mm -hmm. she did not win. Um, so I will continue to be engaged with my foundations. I'll continue to write my columns in Huffington Post, and I also write a columns in, uh, in you have India. have a blog. Yeah, I do have a blog, a columns are blog. Can you tell us a little more about that? Because it's so, so this fascinating. I have read many of your blogs. They are mind-boggling. Well, I'm, <laughs> I hope, uh, 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 I hope it's, uh, it has the same effect and impact and influence uh, as it has on you. So mm -hmm. we, I write the, uh, uh, in the United States, I write the Huffington Post blog uh, on politics and the current activities, mm -hmm. and I just wrote on the middle class, why there's an income in inequality and justice in America. Uh, before that, I wrote something about the immigrations, and before that, we wrote uh, something about the travel ban. I also have a columns I write every month in India in coordination and conjunction with IANS, which is the second mm -hmm. wire, wire service in, in India, and that uh, goes to the hundreds of newspapers in India, English, Hindi, and Urdu media, and, and those uh, columns are mostly focused on um, education that I did, inclusive uh, India, and also we talk about the art and culture. Now, uh, the next column that will come out will be the freedom of press and the freedom of expression, which is important. In some cases, uh, the, some journalists have been killed in India um, because what they believe in it, and that mm -hmm. to me, uh, it does not represent the character and consciousness and the value of India that has always been a beacon of democracy and, and the diversity and also freedom of press is important to them. This is how the democracy flourishes. Uh, and I will continue to do so. And uh, also I give a lot of speeches, as you know, and, and, the, and the speeches also vary on several topics. I'm giving a speech on philanthropy uh, on the I call the power of purposeful philanthropy uh, at the India diaspora on Saturday at one o'clock. So I'll continue to do uh, those kind of things to serve our country and our community as we move forward. Recently, you made some very, very constructive comments on the Indian Supreme Court ruling on the divorce among Indian Muslim women called Talak. And you were very much appreciated, praised by many women, although you also came under criticism for your views. Could you share uh, okay, so your views on that? Because it's so important. It is. So Dr. Banik uh, is called triple talaq. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a, I'm a Muslim, and, uh, and I came from India, so I'm Indian Muslims, uh, and Indian American Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I said that the, uh, the, pers the perspective and the views that the people who have about triple talaq, they can, they can divorce their wife by saying it three times, uh, they're desperate and distorted. 
I would, uh, um, uh, and also the Indian Muslim should, woman should not be, uh, uh, should not be demonized, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and it turns out that the people who are in the favor of triple talaq saying that the divorce rate is very low in Indian Muslims, mm -hmm. which is probably true, but our own analysis shows that the that the that the this is not about the divorce rate. This is about what right a man has to say those uh, deplorable words mm -hmm. to, by saying three times in divorcing. And that woman is the child. She's the mother of that child mm -hmm. that, that, they, that, they, right, that right. They both of them share, a man mm -hmm. and a woman. So I applaud the Supreme Court justice, what they have done, and I think that the uh, I would hope that the government working in conjunction, the central government working in conjunction with the state government, uh, enforce this law uh, to make sure that the, that the Muslim woman, uh, Indian Muslim women are protected. And what we need to focus on is to how to empower them, mm -hmm. Indian Muslim women, by education so they can earn a living, so they can part of the 21st century workforce so they can determine in their own destiny rather than focusing on something to me is a demeaning, demonizing, mm. deplorable, and demoralized, moralizing. In this context, I want to compliment your life partner, Debbie Dreisman. You and her jointly have Frank Islam, Debbie Dreisman, philanthropic foundation you know you have been a wonderful example of how two different cultures can work together in harmony so what is your secret of having this <laughs> chemistry between you and our dearest friend David Dyesman so my wife Debbie um, we have been married for a long time for 30 years so we uh, hopefully we gotten to know each other uh, share a, a common vision and values, mm -hmm. uh, helping others mm -hmm. and art and culture and education. Um, uh, and she also helps and supports uh, her family so that the kids can go to school just like mm -hmm. I do. Uh, so we have a shared goal. I would hope we have a shared responsibility and shared sacrifices. We believe in the common mm -hmm. goals and a common cause. That's, so we're linked by common cause, common commitment, and uh, and uh, and a common belief. That's mm -hmm. the best way to describe it. She's a wonderful woman, and uh, yes, we are from, um, uh, my wife is a Dutch, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, her parents came from Holland. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to, we were able to work together because we believe, mm -hmm. uh, we believe in the, uh, uh, in terms of the uh, educations and arts and cultures and so on and so forth. So. Um, and I'm fortunate to have her, and so she's a she's a she's also a lifelong learner mm -hmm. in uh, you know in terms of uh, belief in education, just like I do. So mm -hmm. uh, so it has worked out pretty good, and I hope it'll continue the path forward. We're stronger together, and together we can help shape a better future. I hope so. Well, we have got a few minutes left. If we can summarize what the next generation, younger generation, should do to improve the quality of lives of women in general and also lives of all of us. Because we are living in a democratic country and democracy is very important. I know you have been a champion of democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of press. So I want you to summarize so, that. In so moment. in order, uh, what you just said, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to tell the younger people uh, that they uh, have several things. Number one is be the best you can mm -hmm. be get a good education, mm -hmm. be a lifelong le learner, learn everything new every day, and exploit your fullest potential. And when you're successful, mm -hmm. help others to succeed. I will also tell them that the, no hope should be high enough, no dream should be large enough for them to achieve. They can make impossible as possible. I also tell them that aim high, work hard, and pursue your dream. Well, it is an honor for me this morning to spend some quality time with you. You are wonderful. I learned a lot. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Dr. Islam, for your time and effort to educate us. Thank you. Thank you.